the favoritism when I grew up was toward my brother. He gave me a hard time. I was made me feel like I was second rate. And mm -hmm. and you know, my dad was very old fashioned and very yeah. strict. This is Sheila's Take, a podcast where you can hear my take on everything. Love, hate, relationships, family, and today's issues with a godly perspective. I'm your host, Sheila Dunbar. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back to this episode of Sheila's Take. This is about to take you on a fabulous journey of uh, quirkiness, joy, and fabulous frocks. Today, I have a very special guest joining me, the one and only Dora too spectacular, right? Yes. Now, Dora, and you're spectacular too. Spectacular. Yeah. Now, Dora it's is our viewers. Viewer. Yeah. I'm sorry. Viewers, y'all are spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dora oh, is a shining example of embracing one's quirkiness and finding joy in the most unexpected places. With her unique blend of humor, laughter, and a touch of drama, she inspires others to shift their thoughts and lives for the better. And let's, let's not forget her fabulous frocks, which are an integral part of her vibrant persona as a fashionable nerd. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready to upshift with Dora Chu Spectacular's contagious energy and upshifting wisdom. This episode is bound to leave you inspired, uplifted, and ready to embrace your own quirkiness. Dora Spectacular, welcome to Sheila's Take. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump right into it. Okay. So tell me a little bit about upshifting and uh, how did you discover it and how has it helped you in your own life? I discovered upshifting a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. There is a well-known philanthropist here in Dallas who had worked with Dr. Urban Laszlo. It's not, there's another Dr. Laszlo and he does skincare. He mm -hmm. was a very famous 40s moving forward. And Dr. Irvin Laszlo does not do skincare, but he is a renowned scientist. And he defines upshifting as the uplifting of one's perspective. Mm. He, he meant that more towards a worldview, but the philanthropist and myself, we kind of took it a more personal interpretation where you, we all have a perspective mm -hmm. and many times it's, it can be negative just from things that happen. It's yeah. just life. And we need to make a conscious effort to lift that perspective. So it's really a conscious lifting of one's perspective. Okay. Wow. Because you're making the decision to uplift your perspective. And that includes our self-talk. Uh, what? I'm sorry? That includes a vital component, which is our self-talk. Was there any faith or spirituality that played a journey in that? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I had a very tough childhood. Two Asian parents that were scientists that were just my father was very strict and had a temper and my mother was very submissive, submissive Asian female, <laughs> even though she was a scientist and they were well renowned that it was so hard. And I was probably traumatized in some ways and I was very lost. Mm -hmm. I had to find, I found my heavenly source, which I feel is important for everybody. Yes. And I started my real growth started when I, I had some brilliant ministry, but along the way, after the ministry, I had to really work on changing the lies that I believed about myself wow. and about life, wow. mm -hmm. because a lot of those lies were formed when I made a hasty decision, decision. Yeah. about sure. something that happened. Yeah. And I see, I began, as I began to get free, I also noticed that so many people around me were kind of living in a lot of, in a lot of ways, similar lives mm -hmm. about themselves, you know, because it affects how you live your life. Right. Yeah. It keeps you from, you know, you get issues and it keeps you from your dreams and, you know, being happy. Yeah. So I've in place, excuse me. 
you you're kind of like stuck. You know, you 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 don't know how to move forward. Yes, you don't know how to move forward, and it's so important to understand that we make initial reactions to things that happen very quickly. And we, many times we need to go back and consciously uplift that reaction. And there is a spiritual viewpoint, but there's also a viewpoint of science where neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to be malleable through life. It's the study of the brain to be malleable. So we can change our thinking. Our brain is very capable. And it, in fact, it would benefit us to do that. And, you know, because it also works your brain out. And, mm -hmm. you know, our brain active and challenged is, is really important, you know, to growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So changing, yeah, so we get the wrong message about ourselves so often and I can give you want me to give an example or of do you course. have an example of something that happened to you like or do you want maybe we ask maybe we talk about something that you've been through lately has something happened recently maybe today or yesterday or this week that made you feel bad you know it's funny you would say that because um this it, it didn't happen recently but uh, you know, my, I lost my mom in 2020 and, okay. oh, my goodness. That's and, so hard. and I lost my, my, I lost my mother in 2020, May of 2020. I lost my sister in December 24th of 2020. So this was, this holiday season was for some reason, very, very particularly hard for me. I mean, again, that's, it was, even though, you know, it's my mom but, and my sister, it was three years ago, but for some reason it really was hard for me to get into, you know, the holiday season. You know, it was, yeah. it was difficult. It was a, a difficult one. No, that is, yes, that, that I can only imagine. So are you saying that for what, some reason this Christmas was more difficult than the Christmas yes. before? Yes, yes, it definitely was. It definitely was difficult for me this Christmas than it was in uh, the previous Christmas. I mean, you know, the, the first Christmas was hard enough because we had lost, you know, I lost my uh, my sister the day before Christmas. But oh my gosh. Um, uh, this one, for some reason, it was just, you know, and uh, I literally had to force myself to just get into. I'm like, you know what? Um you, 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 you gotta do, you, you, you just gotta get out of this. You gotta get out of this, you know? And, and, and I literally forced myself to, 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 to think a different way and try not to dwell on the kind the Christmases were in the past and, and, and dwell on, you know, well, you know what, it's time to start making new memories and, and, and things like that. So definitely it, it was, it was a difficult, uh, a couple of days leading up to Christmas. No, and I, I can imagine though that having spent three years without them has been very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, know what I mean? It, like it, you've had three years to like really miss them. And maybe did you feel kind of sorry for yourself in a way that I, you know you didn't have them? Um it's just it that, to be bored. That's kind of mean. I didn't mean it like that, but what I mean is that it's easy to like kind of get down on ourselves, maybe. It was more of the fact that, you know, Christmas was one of the holidays that my mom really, really, uh, you know, we, 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 you embraced, yeah. she embraced Christmas, she embraced it, you know, and, um, that's special doing cooking and things like that. And I'm like, Oh, you know, you know, I, I, I would love to, there were times when I would like pick up the phone and call my mom and like, mom, how do you, could you remember how to make this? You know, it was things like that. And, and knowing that I couldn't do that, you know, and, 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 uh -huh. and it, it was just things, you know, as I was cooking, things came to mind and I'm like, yeah, oh, I don't remember this. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I would love to be able to call my mom and, 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 and ask, you know, do you remember how to tell, you know, show, I don't remember how to do this because that was one of the uh -huh. things that, you know, I, I was always, uh, I always did, you know, I was the baby of the family. I mean, well, I say I'm the baby of the family and, you know, I would call my mom for everything, you know, mom, what do you think about this? Or do you know if I can do this? Or what do you think? Of, you know, so that's, that was one of the, um, 
that was that's what made it kind of really difficult you know I you know what there's so much to uh, there's so much to hear about the fact that one I mean your mom and you had something very special mm -hmm. you know and also too kind of that you know you have your own special joy in your own ways mm -hmm. and you know what I mean, it's like you could pass on what she gave you onto someone else yes you know what I'm saying yeah. like I guess what I'm saying is that you could decide to make a choice to pass that on to someone else and you know what she gave you and also you could also make a choice to find another wonderful source like your mom even though nothing will ever replace your right mother. right mother you could like you know not that anyone's going to replace your mom but what I meant is like maybe another she affirmed you mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah she made you feel good about yourself mm -hmm. and maybe recognize that maybe it's time to look at other avenues on ways that you can feel affirmed because you know our parents like they affirm us, you know, yeah. not that my parents affirm me all the time, but it's like, but still, you know, when they, you're, they love you when you get affirmation and it's like, I think it's recognizing that you're still as wonderful as you were before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. 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 And, and so it's kind of like, you have to like go back and say, okay, what am I, you know, what am I telling myself here and what can I do to, to lift that up, hmm. to make that thing more positive. You know, this has been a good year for me. I've, I've done some things. I've, I've, um, again, I started this podcast in April. This is my, and I'm on my second season. I'm sorry. Yes, that's, yeah. that's congratulations. Yeah, you know, and, um, it's, uh, it's more of a, I think more, I've, um, I, I've been in what I call, I hate to say the year of no, um, but yeah, I've been I've been in a year of nowhere. I've been doing more uh for myself because I feel like if I if I can't do and 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 uplift myself and 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 pour into myself, then I can't help anyone else because you know I, I'm not gonna be any good if I'm if I'm an empty cup. So I've been doing a lot yeah. this year, you know. And yeah. uh, great, you know, I, I feel great about myself. You know, I, I, I feel like, I hate to use this term, but I said this to my husband the other day. I feel like I can take on the world right now, you know? Uh -oh. because, because well, I mean, you're incredible. I mean, you're such a, you have so much like joy and it's just, how do I say, spirit. And I mean, I'm, and I'm blown away by your hair. I really <laughs> love your hair. <gasps> Thank you. No, I, I just bought a product just for a I'm sorry. I, I haven't used, well, I haven't used it yet. I guess you can tell, but I just bought a product yesterday to give my hair more body. So I probably should have used it today, but my hair is so straight. I mean, it dried straight yesterday. So there's it's when it does that, it's kind of flat, but mm -hmm. you know, I needed I love what I know, I just love your hair. So, <laughs> well, thank anyway. you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. But um let me ask you this. Can you share some um, examples of how you use laughter and drama to inspire people to shift their thoughts and lives? Laughter is, as I say, medicine for the soul. Mm -hmm. Even the Mayo Clinic has info about laughter and right. how important it is for us. And, you know, I love the fact that we can, well, how do I say it again? That having a sense of humor is so important yeah. and you know we don't have to be serious all the time even when we talk about ourselves mm -hmm. or even when we're talking about serious things the importance of humor is just is vital and I got kind of my quirky nerdy self after I went through healing like I had it before but I she never really how do I said again she never felt comfortable to come out this quirky part of me I'll call mm -hmm. it I'll right. call it the, and just being able to be myself and have that sometimes and also make people laugh has just given yeah. me so much joy. We have a project. Well, we have a couple projects, but I'm not able to post them right now, mm -hmm. but they all deal with using laughter 
and some drama to help people feel better about themselves. Oh, yeah. You know, the importance of your self-talk mm -hmm. because it really, it, it really does determine and hold the key to where our life can go sometimes. Exactly. We, how do we feel about ourselves? We have to recognize that. So, and I mean, how do I say it again? I love fashion. So I have to say that fashion, fun, and wellness are crucial and important. And yeah. I have been finding out lately that even though I used to go and interview at Fashion Weeks, mm -hmm. you know, I did that. Now my favorite thing to talk about is wellness. Is wellness? <laughs> it's oh, yeah. Yeah. Wellness. Yeah, it's just so much more meaningful than, I mean, I love fashion, but mm -hmm. wellness is just something that that's more in my heart. Right, right. Because I've been experiencing it for so many years and just seeing the light go on in people's eyes or seeing after time and how people I know actually look better. They just look freer, you mm -hmm. know, when they deal with these things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's a new freedom that you get. Let's, let's talk. What are some of your favorite fabulous frocks and how do they contribute to your overall message of perkiness and joy? <laughs> I love frocks. I also love purses, but I have a favorite designer. I've been following her for so many years, probably mm -hmm. around five or six years. Her name is Simone Rocha. She's an English designer. Mm -hmm. Her father was a designer. I think she won the CDFA award in 2016 and I collected some of her pieces from resale sites and for on sale oh, really? from that okay. year. Yeah, you know, I'm ready to let some of them go, but I followed her through the years and she's such a bad girl. <laughs> she does like this, I'm kidding, you know, she does like this punk goth look, but mm -hmm. she does it with tall and beautiful fabrics. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the, some of her pieces are a work of art. I don't own her really exquisite pieces. They're just okay. a fortune, even on resale and even on, you know, on sale. And I also love, there's a pro, there's a designer called Y Project. There is another designer called R13. And it's kind of a punk goth theme, but it's done very well. And mm -hmm. the fabrics are mainly from Japan and it's made in Italy. And I have a lot of those pieces. Oh, this is the Simone Rocha. Oh, this okay. Is yeah. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. And I redo, see, it's kind of quirky with the little button collar. This is the 2016, I think. Actually. Really? I have a lot of her older pieces. Oh yeah. They last forever and you just take care of them. Mm -hmm. So I just have a collection of like, you know, some, and then, oh, and then there's a designer that's, He's, they're from Shanghai mm -hmm. and they're, I get them on Essence on sale because it's expensive, but it's S-S-E-N-S-E. -S -E -S -E. They have all these, all the designers like Rick Owens and mm -hmm. Como de Garçon also have a lot of new designers and they're super cool. Like I got an email about Dion Lee the other day and his pieces are just like, really edgy so clothing is an expression mm -hmm. and I think yes. it really communicates to others all about yourself and you don't have to open your mouth yeah and, it's, and when you get your style down like what do I feel good in? not what looks good on the rack what cost a lot what did I get on sale but mm -hmm. what do I put on that makes me feel cool yeah or makes me feel beautiful or makes me feel strong. You know, we need, you know, I'm one of those people that it's, it's how I'm feeling that day. My outfit will determine what I feel like that day, you know? Um, yes. So I, I can't say I really have like a, 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 a certain fashion that I like it, again. It's just what I feel like, what I'm going to put on that day or how, it determines my it, what my mood is determines what I'm gonna wear. Do you have an idea like the night before? Do you ever no, kind of plan I never, out? never. You don't? No, really? It, I, it was I, I, I had no idea what I was gonna put on. I, I'm like, okay, uh, what do you feel like today? I'm like, you know what? I feel like a silver. I'm gonna put on like a silver today. So, you know, it's it's that's that's what it is. And you know, um, 
And then I, you I, put it on and you totally rock it. Yeah. Thank you. You, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but you like, enjoy yourself because you're like, you're, does it make you feel good all day? Does it help yes. you feel uplifted? Yes, it does. Oh, does making that choice, it, does it stay with you all day? Are you happy that you chose? Oh, that yeah, day? definitely. I, I, I don't think yeah. I've ever, you know, yeah. as I've become an adult, I don't think I've ever said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I should have wore something else. I never, I don't think I've ever, I, I can't, I can't say I've said that, you know, I've always felt comfortable uh and what I wear if if, if I can if, yeah. if that makes sense you know because yeah. again, I'll pick something out depending upon the mood a lot of times you know I'll have something picked out if I'm going somewhere or doing something I'll have something picked out and I'm like yeah you know what I'm not feeling that like 10 minutes before 50 uh, an hour before it's time to go I'm like yeah I don't want to wear that I'm going to put this on and it's usually the, right. the oh yeah oh yeah I do that too even though I may plan and have everything laid out <laughs> everything coordinated and accessorized I still change my mind yeah yeah you know, and then it's a mad dash you know <laughs> like get it together exactly um yeah. let me ask you this how did your upbringing in Dallas and the favoritism you experienced shape your journey towards becoming a fashionable nerd the favoritism when I grew up was toward my brothers oh okay and then it gave me a hard time. I was, it made me feel like really, uh, how, do, how do I say it again? It made me feel like I was second rate. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, my dad was very old fashioned and very yeah. strict. And, you know, he was raised in China and he was raised with a lot of criticism. And, you know, I've been on my journey where I forgave my dad and we actually made peace mm -hmm. and yeah. I was free because I didn't, I, at, we made peace and I told him I loved him, but it was not that I told, I said, dad, I love you in spite of you doing this. Mm -hmm. I just love you. Right. And it was, it was really freeing, but you know, it, I had to deal with a lot of lies about myself, but I think all that works for good. Like everything works for good. And it, I learned a lot about myself and I'm pretty sensitive. I'm a very sensitive person. How did the favoritism you experienced shape your journey towards becoming a fashionable nerd? Oh, oh, the favoritism in fashion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. No. Well, you, but because of what happened with your, um, with your, with your, your brothers and so forth, how did that, did that do anything towards the dad? Have, did that have a, a, a effect on you being wanting to be, you know, be a fashionable nerd. How did well, that I think, I think learning, uh, getting healing and mm -hmm. being myself, right. Getting nerd, nerdy self mm -hmm. together, you know, and not afraid to come out. Yeah. I think being able to express that in fashion and in the fashion world was great because the people in the fashion world weren't really used to somebody so nerdy and it was, it was fun. <laughs> you know, they enjoyed my nerdy approach. Yeah. I have to say, I think they did. Uh, yeah, but I discovered along the way, especially when COVID happened, that that wasn't my journey. Yeah, I wanted to do something that had a little bit more depth because it's fun. It's it was fun to interview people, but in the years that I spent going to fashion weeks and chasing people around, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of either the time nor the opportunity to really talk about something that could really help yeah you know other people. Yeah. and it was fun but that was it and I wanted to do something that would really help people more and have more depth I think because of uh COVID uh uh the the, the and the pandemic it kind of realign a lot of people's uh purposes and and what they thought was important and what's not wasn't important you know yes uh, so many people it certainly did with me you know um so uh, and i think a lot a lot of people realize you know hey is this really what i want to do you know it, i mean especially when we had um what is that the shelter in place where you was you know stuck at home <laughs> for weeks and weeks and um I mean, you know, you 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 kind of realize there are other things that you could do, you know. But mm -hmm. um, what advice do you have for someone who who wants to embrace their own quirkiness and find joy in their everyday life? I would recommend first looking at 
how you see yourself mm -hmm. and just make sure that when things happen that you're met that you're careful to check what you told yourself like you know someone can't come to a party that you're giving or if you don't get the promotion or yeah. if you know some let's say that maybe your boyfriend breaks up with you or you know other things it's really easy to be negative and make sure that you are giving yourself words of love and affirmation instead of condemnation yeah. because it's easy to say to yourself some pretty negative things when that's going on especially when it first happens within trauma and maybe even in your past but look at the messages that you've received and told yourself were true and start to uplift those and you're I think that as you do that you'll find more freedom to really be who you are mm -hmm. and of course you know don't compare yourself to other people that's the kiss of death yeah. as I've been told before I hear that a lot I feel like definitely hear we that. all compare ourselves and it's like it's you're not giving yourself you're not giving yourself the freedom to embrace what makes you special because right. you're looking at other people and you're always going to look at what they have better than you and there's and you're going to be in this it's a downward spiral right right it, people that do that you end up getting really negative about yourself yeah well the point is to recognize your you were created fearfully and wonderfully mm -hmm. i mean that's psalm 139 yeah. fearfully and wonderfully made and embracing how you were made and how you know just oh, how do i say it again there's no i mean it's not that there's no one else like you because i know that a lot of people we've all heard that but it's like there's some so many things that are fearfully wonderfully made within you also mm -hmm. that no one else has that if you just let yourself be and loved yourself loved your heavenly source love others mm -hmm. these things have an opportunity to grow and develop within you exactly yeah i, I and laugh. yeah I, I i agree with that you know i i agree with you know what's what's for you is for you and what's for someone else is what is for someone else you know i believe in you know jeremiah i think is uh 29 and 11 you know um for God knows the plans that he's mm -hmm. made for you, you know, and every, and, 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 and once we as individuals realize that we are on a path and, and there are things that we, we, we can't compare ourselves to other people because we, what's, what, what's going to be for Dora is not going to be for Sheila and what's going to be for Sheila is not going to be for Dora. Uh, you know, and a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, look, look at Dora. She has this fabulous life and this and this and this. And look what I have. But you know what? You you have this. You you don't know what, what Dora has gone through to get the life that she has. You don't know what Sheila's gone through to get the life that she has. I truly believe that we we need to be comfortable in our own skin and, and, and our own selves so that we can, we, we can be, we can be our authentic selves. And I right, think yeah. if you're able to be authentic, then you, you, then you, you're able to love yourself and be comfortable with yourself, you know, and, 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 and be free and not care. You know, I, I it took me a, a lot of years, Dora, to, to get to a point where I didn't care what people thought, you know, and now you know, I could care less, <laughs> you know, um, because I'm not here. My job is not to um, care about what people think. It's it's to care about, it's to please God and to help people. And that that's what I'm supposed to do. Not worry about, you know, well, you know what? Sheila has on silver today, but that's not Sheila's color. I don't think she should... Okay, well, you know what? You may not think that silver's my color, but I think silver's my color. And I like it. So that's what I got on today. <laughs> so, but here's my question, my last question for you, Dora. What are you grateful for? I love how you brought up your, I know you have a relationship with God. And I think I'm grateful for, I guess, the gift of perseverance mm -hmm. and, uh, well, I guess, you know, 
I'm grateful to have joy too. Just, you know, and mm -hmm. just in how God's, you know, given me what he's given me. And how do I say it again? I think right now I'm in a little difficult stage because I'm looking back right now at some of my mistakes that I've made. And it's really a good thing because I don't need to be making them anymore. Right. You know, but I'm, I guess I'm grateful, yes, for the perseverance, the gift of perseverance and the gift of joy. And I'm great. I mean, God has given me amazing people to just, you know, yeah. how do I say it again, to kind of guide me mm -hmm. and to mentor. And I've had those people, I've had amazing people probably throughout my life, especially when I really like needed them. And I'm grateful for that too. Mm -hmm. And I'm, your yeah. words were really uh, touched me about not letting other people what they're going through influence what you think about yourself or do you know what I'm saying? No, that was beautiful. Because yeah, I think, Cause I, think I tended to like, I was going off into this tangent during the holidays of looking at other people mm -hmm. and that really, thank you. That really helped oh, me so much. thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm, 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 I needed to be, we all need to be reminded of that. We, we do. We definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about it. We still need to be reminded. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dora, mm -hmm. um, do you have a website so that my, my listeners can reach out to you if they'd like to, or? Oh, yes. I, first of all, I put more on Instagram okay. than I do on my website but i mean both are fine it's what's your dora what's your instagram uh what's your instagram it's, it's dora spectacular that's d-o-r-a and then spectacular mm -hmm. and then my website's dora spectacular.com okay so okay. i would love people to follow me we've got some really cool things coming up that i can't really disclose too much about yet and also we're going to be coming back from a break on instagram soon but there's other content that's really fun that the one of the last with well, the last there were some posts that I've done two in the last five that both were like little talks about mm -hmm. what I've been through and then there's a little bit of comedy in there also and some uplifting upshifting okay. stuff all but, right. yeah but there's more all right thank you Sheila well, thank I've had you. Some, I've really had so much fun and enjoyed our visit. Uh, thank you, Dora. And please, my listeners, please go to uh, Dora's website, Dora Spectacular, and, and definitely follow her on Instagram at Dora Spectacular. And All don't right. forget that you're spectacular too. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, Dora. Thank you thank for being a guest. Join me next time where I will continue to discuss more of today's issues. I'm your host, Sheila Dunbar. Blessings to you.